Welcome back to Hobby Jogger Elite and welcome back to the marathon build, the fall 2023 marathon build, where I am training to run a marathon on November 12th as fast as I possibly can. This is contextualized and preceded by my previous three marathon attempts that have plagued me with a number of different issues when it comes to the end of the race, things I'm trying to fix and alleviate with this training block by going pretty much like deeper in the well than I ever have before. Previously, I have built up to, you know, around 70, 75 miles in my peak weeks. And right now I'm maintaining anywhere from 80 to 85, 86, 87 miles per week. In this marathon build, I feel fitter than ever. And I feel more prepared for the marathon distance as well as the intensity that it requires you to meet whatever that goal is when it comes to what you're trying to run on race day. So we at the time of this recording are only less than five weeks, four weeks and six days to be exact. From the day of the race, at the time you are seeing this on the day it's published, we are exactly four weeks away. So not a ton of time left in what has been a pretty long training block. I would say the main difference between this training block, previous ones, has been sort of the, the philosophy, but overall like the training structure. I have followed where I've sort of made a slight transition from following Fitzinger's advanced marathoning training plans in my past two training blocks. I am now pretty much 100% faithfully following Daniel's running formulas approach. And overall, like if you read these books back to back, and I do encourage you not to just like look at the training plans if you are using these kinds of books and actually understand sort of the, the way intensity, pace, workouts are structured, things are prescribed. It feels like understanding the philosophy behind these approaches is a bit more useful than just sort of looking at the training plan and sort of guessing at what paces or intensities you should be running at. Overall, the there is a decent amount of overlap in terms of approach in philosophy, so it's not that dramatic of a change going from primarily Fitzinger's advanced marathoning to Daniel's running formula when it comes to the marathon training plans. I remember when I, in previous training blocks, was considering sort of what approach I wanted to take. Every time I looked at Daniel's running formula, it felt a lot more intimidating and it felt a lot more demanding. And I would say that superficially at face value, that feels like the biggest difference. There is a fair mix of the same types of workouts, principles, when it comes to Fitzinger versus Daniels. I would say, according to really any marathon training that is aimed at making you more fit for the marathon, the same elements are gonna be there. They're just gonna be there in slightly different amounts, slightly different orders sometimes, but for the most part, you essentially are gonna do easy aerobic running you're gonna do a lot of your workouts at threshold effort or threshold pace. And as you work through, you're gonna get more specific with marathon pace in your long runs, for instance. And then some of those threshold workouts will start to transition to more VO2 max speed-based workouts in an effort to just kind of sharpen up your fitness get you as fit as possible, a decent way out from race day so that you're peaking at the right time and then tapering. It's kind of similar when it comes to Fitzinger and Daniels, but Daniels workouts feel, again, a lot more robust, a lot more demanding. And with Fitzinger, I always felt like there was a lack of certainty when I got to the point where I was tapering in terms of wondering whether or not, just mentally, I knew physically I had done a ton of work, but mentally I didn't feel like I had reached the potential of my confidence in thinking, okay, I can hold this pace for 26.2 miles, 42, and change kilometers. And with Daniel's running formula, I think it has required me to not necessarily push myself too far, but like walk kind of right up to the edge 
of that precipice in terms of like looking down and saying, okay, if I go any further, like I am going to fall. Uh, something bad's gonna happen. I'm gonna get like seriously injured or seriously overworked, seriously overtraining if things are not done intentionally and carefully here. So I think there is a greater level of sort of like you need you need to think about things more when it comes to Daniel's running formula. Whereas with Fitzinger, I found that it was very easy and simple to follow those plans to understand the approaches. I didn't think that there was as much structure when it came to workouts or as demanding of workouts. It was kind of like, there might be one speed session a week here and there. Sometimes there are absolutely no speed sessions throughout the week, and they're pretty simple, straightforward, long tempos, long threshold sessions, and then your long runs are just kind of at like a long run pace, which is somewhere like easy to steady. Whereas Daniel's running formula, I feel like just two quality workouts is enough for me per week to get me as fit as I have ever been. But like there have been times when I have felt like again, I'm really going deeper in the well than I ever have before. So I'll probably make a video in the future comparing these a little bit more, a bit more of a specific breakdown, but I would say at this point where I am sort of, again, able to see the light at the end of the tunnel in terms of like the taper and race day approaching in around like exactly a month from now, I do feel a difference between training according to Fitzinger and Daniels, where Daniels feels a bit more confidence inspiring to sort of sum it up, but it does require more thought more intention and just like generally more attention to detail out of the person following it. I am somebody who likes to train. If I had to pick between training and racing, I would just train forever. So I like training hard and I like seeing what I'm capable of in training. So with that in mind, I think I am a fan of Daniels a little bit more, but that remains to be seen as in terms of what results it sort of yields. But overall, I think both are solid, but I know for somebody like me so far, I've really enjoyed Daniel. So outside of that little spiel, that little introduction on Daniels versus Fitzinger, let's get into what this most recent week of training looked like, my 12th week of marathon training. And and week 12 was interesting considering this plan because it, I, I feel like this was one of the most intense setups in terms of workouts, the two workouts that I had for week 12 feel like what I would do in the past in like an absolute peak week or like even more than I've done in a peak week before. And there still are some pretty intense workouts from here until the taper. But like this was, again, in terms of workouts, one of the most demanding weeks of training I have ever had. And they were intimidating while like looking at the plan and thinking about them. But I think I executed them pretty well. Started off Monday with a 10 mile easy run. I've been trying to be really smart about the footwear I'm wearing, about the surfaces I'm running on, about like elevation profiles of the routes I'm running on. I just experienced a little bit of discomfort like two weeks ago when I would like go to those normal routes that I was running on before. That's why I was running on a lot more flat, soft surfaces in the past two weeks. But I've gotten back to like my normal 10 mile loops and feeling good definitely feeling good about 737 average pace for that run and then the next day one of my earliest runs of the training block 454 a.m got out the door for a, an eight mile easy run 748 overall average pace felt like absolute garbage running that early but hey that's what it takes sometimes the next day kept it easy on Tuesday because that next day, Wednesdays, that's when I'm doing my workouts typically. Did four by two miles at a threshold effort. Got in just under 14 and a half miles on the day, about an hour and 40 minutes of running. If you remember back to a few weeks ago, I did a similar workout to this. I think it was like early September or the middle of September, still very hot and humid and let the ego take over during that and absolutely like bombed, like came crashing to the ground on the final two reps of that four by two mile workout. And my main goal with this workout on Wednesday was to just not do that and run these as even as possible while like working towards like a middle of the road sort of threshold effort on each rep. And I think it was it was a mission accomplished for the most part when it came to that. So let's let's take a look at that right now and then we'll get back into the weekly wrap up. Good morning. 
everybody. We are back on the trail for another workout. It is absolutely so incredibly foggy today, as you can see. Feels very ghoulish, monsterish, which feels rather appropriate for it being October now. Yeah, today's workout is gonna be anywhere from three to four mile warm up, four by two miles with two minute recoveries between each two mile rep two mile reps at threshold effort so cool down three miles that'll be 14 or 15 on the day so of course gotta make our our first stop here a good portion of my marathon in november is on sort of packed gravel like this so getting used to running fast on this type of terrain can really only help all right three mile warm-up is done right there. Just going to run this workout smarter than I did last time. Don't run with the ego, run with some intelligence. That's what I'm telling myself. So we'll sort of ease into it on this first rep and then just try to maintain effort on the next three. So let's dig in. First two reps are done, so two of the four two mile reps. Did the first one in 12, 19, so 609 a mile. The second one, I think it was 1208, so 604 a mile. Definitely felt like I opened up a little bit on that second mile, so we are at the turnaround point. Gonna take a Yuma here, caffeinated one the strawberry lemonade it, it's absolutely delicious i feel like you could use this as like pie filling but yeah halfway through two more two mile reps gonna get this down keep on rocking and roll it is so foggy so humid out here can't even see through my sunglasses so we gotta go shadesless recovery over now next two mile rep See if we can get it done. Third rep done in 12.15. So 6.07 a mile. It's always tougher on this route because although it is like you know, very flat, or at least seemingly very flat. It is a slight downhill grade the whole way out, and then a slight uphill grade the whole way back. So essentially, every time I do an out and back on this, on this route, it makes it that much tougher on the way back, which I guess is probably a good, good thing to do in training, make it a little bit tougher towards the end, dig in a little bit, but I'm gonna finish out. Rep number four here in about 30 seconds. See how that goes. Ah, and those are the reps. 12, 13 for the final two mile rep. That is 6.06 a mile. That's some nice, even two mile reps. But happy with the effort. I'm at about 11 and a half miles. I think I'm gonna go ahead, cool down to whatever I feel like. We'll catch up when I pull down. All right, 14.4 miles later. Coro says it was a threshold focus, so that means I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, I suppose. Also says I'm improving aerobically and anaerobically, which the fact that I'm still improving this late into the training block, you know, 11, 12 weeks in, we're only five and a half weeks out from the race, that feels like something to be happy with. I really felt good on this one with the effort being a bit more consistent, a bit more conservative out of the gate. Um, there's just so much like steam pouring off of me right now. You may be wondering why for this workout I'm wearing a brand new pair of Endorphin Speed 3s that are a completely different color than the ones I was wearing for last week's workout. 
I tried to order a pair of Endorphin Shift 3s from a specific company that had the Shift 3s on like a crazy discount. Like, I think I paid $65, ordered a pair of Shift 3s, and in the mail, instead, they sent me uh, a brand new pair of another pair of Endorphin Speed 3s. So, uh, I got these Endorphin Speed 3s, which I think are probably one of the coolest colorways for not even $65. Incredible. And then I ended up getting a pair of Shift 3s anyway because I wanted to try them. But two pairs of Endorphin Speed 3s in the past week. Uh, brand new. Didn't even try to do that. But they keep finding me for some reason. It's like me and this shoe are meant to be together. Really solid workout. Really happy about that workout. Not too much to complain about when it comes to running those even reps. Followed that up again with a strength, mobility, and core session later that day. And then Thursday did another 10 miles and change, a little over 10 and a half miles, 82 minutes of running, 746 average pace, keeping it nice and consistent with those easy runs. And then did a double later that day, a little over three and a half miles, did a nine mile easy run then on Friday at just under eight flat overall pace. Wanted to have my legs feeling as good as possible the following day for the long run. So absolutely massive massive workout on the docket for the long run it's it, it was pretty much a marathon simulation it is recommended that you do this type of workout at least like three weeks out from your marathon like doing it two weeks out is probably okay in some cases but it's also like a little bit close to the actual race day to put in that big of a stimulus and like ask your body to recover fully while you are still like doing some sharpening up speed workouts. So I wanted to play it safe, did it five weeks out and still have some pretty big long run workouts to go until the taper begins between now and race day. Really wanted to sort of see what I could do in a very like long block of quality pace work, especially with my half marathon getting canceled, I guess two weeks ago now from this point. So warmed up three miles before hitting 15 miles straight of marathon pace. Last year I did this workout, went well, but afterwards I felt like a slight twinge, the tweak, not a full on strain, but like a sort of lingering tightness in my calf for like a good four days after the actual long run session. So I like did not want to face that that close to race day. I did 14 miles last year at marathon pace before that, did 15 total this time. And last year at pretty much a similar like effort level, slightly higher heart rate, did it at like 650, 645-ish range. This year did it at 634 pace overall for 15 straight miles, about an hour and 38 minutes of running. And like it, I was I was blown away by the fact that I got myself to do that during like still a very high mileage week for me. But luckily enough, I had Lauren on the bike with me to keep me company. So that was a bit of a morale booster. It absolutely poured during this run. Like it was almost, it was like mid 60s, 65 degrees out, like 100% humidity. It was windy, it was pouring rain. I just like found a way to find that comfort and the discomfort and just like keep pushing myself. For 15 straight miles. Yeah, like 15 miles at six and a half minute mile pace. My like upper end threshold effort was at like 625 to 630 back in April of this year. And the fact that at a perceived effort that is like just like a little bit beyond what my steady effort feels like at this point is is like blowing my mind. Like this fitness is like nothing I've ever experienced before. And I want to execute as much as possible and like capitalize on this fitness as much as possible. So I'm trying to run the rest of this training block as smart as possible and not necessarily be like super conservative with my training, but just like play it smart. Don't necessarily play it safe every single day, but like play it smart. Don't coast into the finish line, but like really just approach every day with intention and intelligence because I have never felt this fit in my life. If you would have showed me this workout a year ago running six 34 average pace for 15 straight miles 
on a terrible, rainy, stormy day in the midst of like an 85 mile week would have told you you were like the biggest liar in the world. I never imagined I'd be able to do that. So it feels great to be able to do that in the midst of a long run workout. And I hope, 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 hope to continue to build on that, execute on this type of fitness come race day because that that is easily one of, if not the best long run workouts, marathon simulation workouts I have ever had that I have ever imagined that I could have. It was windy, it was, it was just disgusting outside and I executed like that on a warm, stormy day. So I hope to potentially replicate that or do even better on a cooler, not torrential downpour type of day. And I don't think that's greedy. I wanna set goals that scare me, but also motivate me to meet that standard that I set for myself. And running 15 miles at six and a half minute pace, I'm, I'm very proud of that. Got around a little just north of 18 miles on the day for that. Didn't wanna push it too incredibly hard after a huge effort. And then Sunday, felt good for another 10 mile easy run 746 average pace on that rolling hill course that was an amazing week of training one of my favorite weeks of training that i've done because the workouts were big there were a lot of quality miles within them eight miles at threshold effort on wednesday and 15 miles at marathon pace or marathon effort on saturday is is like crazy that's that's a big big week that felt really intimidating on monday when i thought okay this is what i have to do this week and it it felt like a lot approaching it and i feel like i i did as well as i could and i'm and i'm proud of that week so closed out the week at 84 miles just under 10 and a half hours of running and it says 3500 feet of elevation gain but the one run was extremely off on that long run workout probably more like 150 to 200 feet of elevation gain over the course of 15 miles, not 800. So a little short of 3000 feet of elevation gain on the week. So that was week 12 of marathon training. Hopefully you enjoyed the featured workout of the week. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for another big week coming up. We are approaching that time where things start to get intense with some of these workouts. They start to get sharp. We speed things up a little bit before bringing the mileage down. And you know, all we can ask for is good health and happiness heading into the taper, heading into race day here in just a few short weeks. It's crazy to think we're already here. So thanks again for watching and uh, we'll catch up next time. Peace.